The lift load Mark III is a patient lift testing load, which has been designed so the operator does not have to lift any component that weighs more than 20 pounds. The bulk of the weight is left at on-site at each facility where routine testing takes place. The operator only needs to carry a minimal amount of equipment to each facility. The lift load can be transported in a small car and assembled on-site. The six frame components are easily assembled by attaching and locking the load beams to the end frames. All six of the locking lobs on the load beams must be hand tight before loading weights onto the lift load or moving the lift load through the facility. The pumpkin weights are mounted to the lift load frame by using the lever handle. Two lever linkages are stored on the lever handle. By removing the pins, the lever linkages are freed from the sides of the handle and can be relocated to the fulcrum point at its base. The steel post of the pumpkin weights is then aligned with the load beam posts on the lift load. The lever linkages are guided by the heads of two fasteners on the load beams. Ensure that both linkages are in the correct guided locations. Using the second ball detent pin from the lever handle, insert the pin through the hole at the bottom of the linkage and through the steel post of the pumpkin weight. Ensure that the pin is fully inserted through the steel post. Pull the lever handle downward to load the linkage. The pumpkin weight will easily lift off the ground with minimal effort on the handle. The lever handle has been designed with an overlock fulcrum. By completely lowering the handle, it will overlock and remain in place until the operator lifts the handle upward. With the pumpkin weight supported by the lever linkages, use the shorter ball detent pin to lock the pumpkin weight to the load beam. Again, ensure the ball detent pin has been fully inserted. Raise the lever handle upward to load the post pin. The pumpkin weight is now supported by the load beam. Remove the ball detent pin from the bottom of the lever linkage and remove the lever handle assembly. Repeat the pumpkin weight loading process for the necessary amount of weights to be used in testing. Ensure all weights are evenly distributed on the cart. The wheels of the casters are designed for rolling on smooth and rough surfaces and are non-marring. The casters used on the lift load have a lock steer feature for ease of maneuvering. The foot switch on each caster has two positions, one which locks the wheel entirely and a second which prevents the wheel from swiveling 360 degrees. When assembling the end frames of the lift load, it is important to have the foot levers for the casters facing inwards. Doing so will prevent the foot pedals from breaking off should the loaded cart bump into a wall while transporting weights. Straps can be attached to the lift load in two manners, looped or choker wrapped. It is important to note the load limit for the strap in each configuration. Shown first is the choker wrapping method. One end of the strap is passed through the load beam, around the loading pin, and fed back through the strap again. The second loop method is performed by passing the strap through the load beam, underneath the loading pin, and using both ends of the strap to attach the lift load to the patient lift. The third method shown is an incorrect use of the loading straps. Each strap is to be wrapped around one supporting pin only. Do not loop the strap around multiple pins, load beams, or end frames. Remove the ball detent pin from the fulcrum point and store the lever linkages on the handle shaft using the same pins. The lever handle is attached to the lift load by using the brackets on the end frames and a pin. The lift load can be maneuvered by pushing or pulling the lever handle. There is significant momentum when the lift load has the weights attached. Use caution when transporting the lift through a facility, particularly on ramps and corners. The load beams each have four convenient loading pins where lifting straps can be attached. For small weight increments, 12 and half pound wafer weights are used. A plastic comb is inserted into the load beams to capture the wafer weights. The wafer weights are U-shaped and rest on top of the load beam in the slots of the comb. The wafer weights should be added symmetrically on the lift load to provide a balanced distributed load while testing.
To remove the pumpkin weights from the lift load, the loading process is simply reversed. The lift load is disassembled by removing the lever handle, loosening the six locking knobs on the load beams, removing one end frame, and finally removing the load beams while supporting the other end frame. The carry bar and tub seat adapter are lift load accessories for testing patient lifts with constrained access. For lifts where the cart cannot fit underneath the spreader bar, tub chair, or lifting hooks, the carry bar provides a solution. The tub chair consists of two parts mated by magnets recessed in their surface. The plate rests on the seat and allows the straps to be passed through the center hole. The pin is fed through the loop straps and held in position with magnets and a machine lip. For tub seats that are not padded, a foam barrier or towel should be used to distribute the load from the plate to prevent damage at pressure points. The carry bar uses load shackles and lift shackles to configure a test load. The load shackles attach to the carry bar and the pumpkin weight using ball detent pins. The carry bar may support up to three pumpkin weights along the bar length and is also designed to carry wafer weights. The lift shackles also attach with the same type of ball detent pins. Both shackle types can be mounted in various positions along the bar length. This allows the straps to be aligned vertically with the spreader bar, tub seat, or lifting hooks. The straps must be vertical to prevent damage to the patient lifts. Specifically for sit-stand lifts and stretcher lifts, there is a small amount of clearance for testing equipment. The carry bar allows the load to be safely lifted without swinging into the patient lift or contacting the lift during testing. When using patient lifts with a secondary frame, such as a stretcher lift, ensure that the loading straps are attached to the patient lift frame. Do not attempt to test the patient lift by attaching the straps to the stretcher frame or any molded seat frame. The carry bar with the load shackle mounted in the center allows for two people to easily transfer pumpkin weights if required.